Yes. Yes. Joe, I'm home. It's good to be home. It's not so much like the place at Jail City. You're here. So it's home. Let me take a look at you. Same eyes. Same nose. Same funny little mouth. Same girl. Oh, Chris. How long can you stay? We're leaving at 6.30 in the morning. Our outfit's going overseas. Oh, Chris, where? Don't get excited. How do I know? Am I the Secretary of War? I always said it wouldn't happen, and I knew it would. I knew it. Hey, 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 this is no funeral. Mickey, your husband, I'm home for the night. I want a hot bath, a cold drink, and a kiss. And I'll have the bath first, about 75 degrees, and make it snappy. <laughs> What was the idea of that? Well, I either had to get up or be kicked out. You're still an awful bed hog. I 
thought the army would cure you of that. Boy, oh boy. You know what I'm going to do after this war is over? No, what? I'm going to concentrate on being a civilian. I'm going to sleep every morning till 10 o'clock. I'm never going to move from one place to another excepting on wheels. What are you looking at me like that for? Nothing. Except of all the guys I could have married. Yeah, so what? I'll never be able to figure out how I happened to pick out the homeliest one. Oh. So that's the kind of talk the soldier gets on a spur well, huh? Now, Chris. You get some morale under my... Now, Chris, don't you dare. Oh, the police. <laughs> But I know what you're thinking of. What? You were thinking about that note I wrote you in Mr. Hill's chemistry class when we were seniors in high school. Why? Isn't that right? Yeah. But, but how did you know? I remember that you were sitting two rows away from me. And I wrote the note and handed it to Jane Wilkinson and she handed it to you. And Mr. Hill caught you just as you were going to open it and he told you to stand up. So you stood up and he told you to read it to the class. And so you waited a minute, and then you just put it in your mouth and chewed it up and swallowed it. And that's what you were thinking about. Yeah. But I still don't see how you knew what I was thinking about. Oh, that's easy. While you were standing there not knowing what to do with the note, there was a big blue bottle fly buzzing against the window pane. And everybody in the classroom was very quiet, waiting to see what you'd do. So the only noise was the buzzing of the fly. So when that fly up there began to buzz, why, both of us thought about the note. That's wonderful, Chris. That's wonderful. What does it mean when two people think about the same things? It just means they're in love, I guess. Mm. Chris. Yeah? What did you say in that note? You know, I never got a chance to read it. You'll never know, baby. You'll never know. Oh, Chris, please. No. Why not? Because I don't remember. You do, too. Okay, I do. I remember every word of it. Well, then why won't you tell me? Because it was so sappy. And besides, you've got enough on me already. Come on. We better get out of here or I'm going to be A-W-O-L. Get here any too soon, did we? Oh, Chris, I'm scared. Oh, that's silly, Joe girl. Nothing's going to happen. I know, but you're going overseas, and I don't even know where you're going. Nothing's going to happen. You figure out the percentages someday when you got a little extra time. They're all in my favor. I know. Holy mackerel, I'm sure gonna miss you. Well, I know, Joe, but that's not the thing to think about. You just think how it's going to be when I come home. There'll be a train just like this one. And you'll be waiting, and I'll jump off and pick you up, clear off the ground, and kiss you a couple of hundred times and take you back to Shale City. Shale City's much prettier than Los Angeles. Tell me more. Well, nothing much more to tell. You'll be holding my job for me, and we'll go right ahead with our plans. Everything will be the same. Except that I'll be crazier about you. Because I've been away from you for a little while. Then we'll go back to Shale City and get that little place on the edge of town. Sure we will. And I'm gonna get some rocks and build a barbecue. And then on weekend nights, we can ask Harvey and Jane and some of the others over and have a few drinks. And, and, and I'll barbecue the meat while you take care of the salad and stuff. Uh-huh. Then we can sleep late on Sunday mornings. As late as we want. Maybe all day. Boy, will that be a relief after this five o'clock routine. Oh, you never wanted to get up when it was five o'clock or noon. I have, too. You that's always lying around the last dogs, huh? Liar. There's another thing we'll be able to have after this is all over, too. What's that? All aboard! We'll have ourselves that kid. A big backyard with a vegetable patch in it. A place for him to play. It's a funny thing. I never thought I'd ever want a kid until I married you. Well, you weren't supposed to, you big lug. 
Another thing about that place, we'll have to find out if it's zoned so that we can have a few chickens, you know. Just enough for a few eggs. And I want an herb garden, you know, with parsley and mint and chives. Last call, all aboard! I love you, Joe. The way I love you is like a fever that's all over me. Write me, baby. Write me whenever you can. And just keep thinking that everything's going to turn out all right, and it will. Oh, Chris, I'll write you every day. Every minute, every second, I'll be sending you messages. And remember to take care of yourself. And watch yourself. You should catch a cold. You know how they always sneak up on you. And don't pay any attention to those English or Australian or Chinese girls. And come back to me, Chris. And come back to me as soon as you can. No matter how tough things are, no matter how bad they seem, all I'll have to do is think of you and I'll come through. Goodbye, girl. Goodbye, Chris. Goodbye. My name is Mrs. Henderson. Dear? A hangover. A 14 ton hangover. I'll never learn. Good morning, kids. Hello, Joe. Hello. My, you look like something the cat dragged in and then dragged out again. You don't look too good yourself. Your eyes are swollen. Yeah, I know. I've been bawling. What's the matter, honey? Chris got in last night. We had dinner together and breakfast this morning, and I saw him off at six. And I bawled. But how wonderful to have seen him, Joe. How is he? It's okay. Well, he's leaving for overseas duty. It's funny when you think about it. I don't even know what to see. Oh, you shouldn't have said that, Joe. That's talking about troop movements, and we're not supposed to. I know. I'm sorry. But it ought to be safe enough here. Everybody but you has a husband in the service. Yes. Doris White. Yes? What have you got on your finger? Just a wedding ring and an engagement ring. Why, Doris, when did it happen? The little chump. I knew she'd go off and pull a trick like that. Well, tell us about it, Doris. Well, there isn't really very much to tell. He just got in town for an hour and 
Well, it took him 45 minutes to propose, and then we went out and got married, and I took him to the train. Oh, gee, Doris, I think that's swell. What's your new name? Dombrowski. You mean you traded a name like White for Dombrowski? That guy must have a lot on the ball. And what's wrong with Dombrowski? Nothing. It's just hard to pronounce in my condition, that's all. What's his first name? Michael. Only everybody calls him Mike. He's tall and good-looking. You say you went right from the preachers to the train? Yes. Hmm. Hey, look, Babs. How about that date we've been talking about? I already told you I got no time for you lunch stand Romeos. When you're ready to talk Coconut Grove, I'll listen. Me, I can't get romantic over a bowl of chili beans. <laughs> okay. I'll try again someday when your eyes are not so bloodshot. Oh, go dye your hair and come back disguised as a young wolf. These senior citizens. You know, Barbara, I think you're leading him on. To what? A 35-cent blue plate special? Of course, you can't blame him for being cheap. He's got a wife and two kids to support. Barbara! Oh, don't get excited. They don't like him any better than I do. Moved out on him three years ago. I don't blame him. You get a four-bit viewpoint with guys like that. All the same, you do date men. Oh, sure, why not? Well, I shouldn't think you'd feel right about it with Pete in the Navy, you know. I certainly wouldn't. Well, you haven't had a chance. And if you'd had as much trouble with a man as I've had with Pete Thomas, you'd sing out of the other side of your mouth. No sense of responsibility, no... nothing. He had enough sense of responsibility to join the Navy, didn't he? Mike volunteered on the day of Pearl Harbor. Well, Pete volunteered three years before Pearl Harbor. That's what I'm beefing about. Fell for that girl in every port stuff. Only I bet for him it works. Look, why don't we all get together and throw a party for the new bride? Initiate her into War Widow's local number 37. And what? Nobody's got a room big enough to hold four people without using a shoehorn. Maybe we could have it at my new place. That is, I'm hunting for a new one now, just in case Mike gets a furlough or something. You know, a bedroom and a living room. How much are you planning to pay? Oh, I'm paying 20 now. I thought maybe for 35 I could get something that would be nice. For 35 you'll still have a rabbit hutch. You know, all of us together, we put out a lot of money each month for rent. What do you pay, Helen? Twenty-two fifty. I pay eighteen. What about you, Barbara? Thirty-two fifty. You see, I like gaudy things. Zero, five, ten, one to carry, eight, nine, eleven, thirteen, three, one to carry, four, five, seven, nine. Ninety-three bucks! How do you like that? Ninety-three bucks for a bunch of rat holes. Well, for that kind of dough, we could have a real house. With a dining room and a kitchen and a living room and a bedroom apiece. And furnished. Furnished how? Well, just as well as what you have now. And maybe with a fireplace. Oh, I'm so sick of warming my feet in front of a gas jet, I could almost bawl every time I see one of the darn things. What do you think of the idea, Helen? It might work. But it's only fair to point out that we're all different people, and there might be a clash of personalities occasionally. We'd have to find some way of adjusting any disputes that might come up. Well, that ought to be simple. We could take a vote. We could run the joint like a democracy. And if anything comes up, well, we'll just call a meeting. Oh, gee, kids, that'd be wonderful. Well, for instance, now the four of us here have two cars, two sets of tires wearing out. We could sell one car and use the other on a share and share alike basis. And we could, oh, we could just do lots of things. How about it, kids? Let's take a vote on it right now, okay? Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 What about you, Barbara? Hmm? Well, say aye. Aye. The motion is carried unanimously. Look, we'll all get together right after work this afternoon and start hunting, huh? Well, here we are. Well, naturally, it'll take some brightening up. Very nice. So fast. Santa Claus will have to turn into a snake if he ever gets down that chimney. Which probably isn't as small as you think. I've seen moths chew bigger holes. My advice now is for all of us to get some sleep. Me too. Never looked at so many empty houses in my life. I think I'll take this old bag up to bed. Hey, break step when you go up that stairway. Looks tired.
Oh, I'm sorry. I... Oh, that's all right. Come on in. Well, were you through? Mm-hmm. Were you praying for him? Yes. Well, I just thought you might be feeling kind of lonesome. Oh, I, I guess I was. Yeah, I know. I know how I felt when I first got married. Maybe so. Only, you see, I'm not exactly married. I just got kind of a first mortgage on him. Well, tell me about him. Go on, it's fun to talk. Is he cute? Oh. I know this sounds silly, but he... Oh, he's the cutest thing you ever saw. Tall? Five feet ten and a quarter. Oh, that, that, that's a perfect height for us. We wouldn't look well together if you were any taller. Blonde or brunette? Kind of brunette, I think. He has black hair and deep blue eyes. That makes him a brunette, doesn't it? Baby, that makes him a knockout in any shade. You got a picture? Yes, I, I have. You see, he was an orphan, and that's the last picture his parents had made of him. He's never bothered to have any more done. We were going to have wedding pictures made, but we didn't have time. Well, if your first boy's as good looking as that, you'll have nothing to worry about. Where'd you meet him? On the streetcar. About six months ago. What did he say when he proposed? Oh, do, you, do you think I really should? Well, of course. How are you going to know you're married if you don't talk about it? Go on, it's fun. Well, he just swept me right off my feet. Go on, go on. Well, we, we sat around the pig and whistle, and he told me about his folks, and then he told me about his friends, and then he told me about the army, and then he got kind of red and uncomfortable, and he said, I don't feel so good. Let's go out and get some air. And I said, well, what's the matter? And, and he said, I, I don't know. I just haven't got any appetite. I said, well, maybe you're in love or something. And he said, well, maybe I am. And, and I said, well, there's a cure for that. And he said, what? And I said, well, you could tell her about it and then maybe get married. And he said, well, I, I don't know whether she'd have me or not. And I said, of course I will. And then we just looked. And then I said, oh, Mike, that's the most beautiful proposal a girl's ever had. And then he got that, you know, that kind of smug look that they do get. And he, and he said, gosh, Doris, I never thought I'd ever have the nerve to say it. Gee, aren't men fools? Yes. But aren't they sweet? Mm-hmm. I guess I'd better go to bed if there's going to be any house cleaning done tomorrow. Feel better? Mm-hmm. Good night. Good night. Sweet dreams. Good night, you seagoing Casanova. Good night, Lieutenant. Good night. My little captain. Hello, you sweet guy. Remember me? I'm the girl who almost didn't marry you. You made me love you, and all the time you knew it. My brother, how you knew it? 
You made me happy sometimes. You made me sad. How's my babe this morning? All right. Don't call me babe. Why not? Because it's not very respectful, you lug. You know, I've been thinking. There you go, exaggerating again. I've been thinking, and it seems to me that you and I ought to be married. What did you say just then? Well, I just said maybe we ought to get married. Is there anything wrong with that? Well, if you haven't the nerve of a government mule, of a... Well, I must say... What's wrong? What's wrong? Everything's wrong. That's all, just everything. What about last night? Don't tell me you've forgotten about last night. Well, what about last night? You've just got the wrong girl, that's all. Me, I'm Joe Flanagan. Remember? Last night, you just spent all your time dancing with Linda Randall, that's all. I danced three times with Linda. And at the Henderson's house, it was Mady Saunders, and at that Halloween hey, you party... You must was... be nuts. I hardly know Mady Saunders. Don't you but... hay me. You just spend all your time dancing and flirting with other girls. And then when you feel your years creeping over you, you come back to good old Joe. What do you mean, years creeping over me? I'm 24, and up till now, I've been free to do as I please. And as for coming back to you, I never left. Quit shouting at me, Chris Jones. It's a fine way to propose. Yelling at me let go. It was a fishwife. I wasn't something. yelling. Yard too. I was just trying to tell you that. I know what you were trying to tell me. After wolfing around every girl. I didn't wolf. You did so. You're a wolf. What happened to all the others? They turn you down. Oh, gone it, Joe. I never proposed to anybody but you. A fine proposal. Making everybody miserable all the time. If you were just. <laughs> oh, why don't you go home and leave me alone? Doggone it, Joe. I haven't made anybody miserable. You have two. All right, who? Me. You darn fool. Now look, Joe. I didn't come around to get into a fight. Ever since I've known you. Well, ever since we were kids, I guess I've been in love with you. Seemed like a nice sunny morning, and I thought to myself, I guess I'll drop by Joe's house and tell her I love her. And ask her to marry me. And that's all there is to it. Well, why didn't you tell me this before? Why'd you have to keep it a secret all these years? Because I didn't know, I guess. Know what? That I was in love with you. Well, I like that, Chris Jones. That's just fine and dandy. So you've been stringing me along all these years, so that's it, huh? I haven't been stringing anybody along. Well, then tell me this, Mr. Wolf. What have you been hanging around all these years for if you didn't know whether or not you were in love with me? Because I like to hang around. I like you, and I oh, wanted to... Oh, you wanted me to be a sister to you, huh? Pals. Lead you around by the hand and keep your nose dry so you can go hanging oh, around with every other girl. Oh, for the love of Pete, Joe, will you stop picking on me? Gee, I never saw a girl as hard to propose to as you are. Aha! Uh -huh. So, I thought you'd never proposed to any other girl before. I never did. Why well, do you know you never saw a girl so hard to propose to? Oh, uh, Joe, that's just the way you say something that you don't mean. Well, why don't you say what you do mean? Maybe this about you and me getting married is just another way of saying something you don't mean. How do well, I know? I don't know why we're having all this trouble. Well, I'll tell you why. Because a girl likes to plan on things, that's why. If a girl's gonna be in love, she wants to be 100% in love. And with a tight mouth clam like you, she's never safe. She can't act like she's in love, because she never knows how the guy really feels about it. She can't come right out with it, and she can't even get a kick out of it, because the darn fool may not be in love with her at all, and she'd just be making an idiot out of herself in front of everybody. That's what makes me so darn sore, Chris Jones, you and your old secrets. And if you Shut ever... up. I'm sick of hearing you holler like that. Judas Priest would have grabbed you're going to be in five years. And I not. said, shut up. You're going to? Okay. Now, there's only one question up between us, and you can answer it with one word. And this is the only time I'll ever ask it. Say it, one word and no more. Will you marry me? Yeah. 
Yes. That's what I thought. That's what you know, you darn fool. That's what you've always known. That's what's always made me so darn sore. I think I've been loving you since the time you hit me on the forehead with a clinker. I was a slip. I only meant to scare you. I think I've been loving you ever since you cut my hair off, remember? She was mom sore. So was I. After the old man got through with me. And then there was the time we went to the freshman dance. She was the prettiest girl I ever saw that night. my first date. Yeah, and you spent all your time dancing with all the other girls. Still would. Only they're all married. And you're all tied up, my lad. From now on, if I even catch and looking sidewise at another girl, I'm gonna hit you over the head with an axe handle. Seems good, doesn't it? about safety on the home front. I'd rather ride a torpedo than a floor mop any day. Honestly, you girls, haven't any of you ever kept house before? Or after, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, darling, you don't carry a mop crosswise. You carry it lengthwise, like a fishing pole, see? Gee, it looks simple. I wonder why I couldn't have figured that out for myself. Tricks of the trade. Uh, I guess I'm just a well-developed halfwit. Bright enough to keep alive, but not bright enough to stay on my feet. Well, let me do the mopping, and you beat the rugs. They're out on the lawn. Beat the rugs. I doubt if they'll stand it. Well, that's what you do when you haven't got a vacuum. But when that lady said carpet sweeper, I thought she meant vacuum sweeper. Well, we're going backwards fast. In the 19th century already. If this keeps up, we'll be hanging from the chandeliers by our tails. Wait a minute. I've been doing some serious thinking here. And the way it looks to me, housekeeping isn't our racket. Well, you little minx, whatever gave you that idea? And practically none of us can cook. What was wrong with those eggs this morning? They weren't cooked. They were vulcanized. You tried too hard. It takes real concentration to make an egg tough. Well, what are we going to do? Listen to Joe. Well, it seems to me we got this house in order to enjoy it. We work eight hours a day as it is. If we have to work another eight hours to keep this dump going, we might as well go back to where we were. We signed a lease and we're stuck with it. I'm going to beat those rugs until they sit up and holla, Uncle. Nope. What we need is a housekeeper. A housekeeper? Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Here, here. What do you think of the idea, Helen? Judging from what I've seen, it's the only idea. Okay, we'll take a vote. Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 Motions carried unanimously. But I hear they're awfully hard to find. How are we going to get one? We'll advertise, little goose. In the meantime, I'll just hold off that rug beating until we see how the idea works, huh?
Yes. My name is Mrs. John Canby Lodge. Yes. Hey, you advertise for a housekeeper? Oh, yes. Oh, won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, uh, this is Mrs. Peter Thomas, Mrs. George Stacy, Mrs. Michael Dombrowski, and I'm Mrs. Christopher Jones. This is Mrs. John Canby Lodge. How do you do? Hello. How do you do? Before I was married, my name was Manya Badenheimer. You may call me Manya. Look, just call me Barbara and we'll forget the whole thing. Barbara, this is Helen, this is Doris, and I'm Joe. Mm. Won't you sit down? Can you dry up? Thank you. Well, uh, have you had any uh, experience in this kind of work? I have kept house for my father in uh, Dresden. He had eight little ones. That gave experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, have you uh, have you any references? Nine. In this country, I am just beginning to work. Um, to try and get my first employment. But I have gone to the university. Oh, that's nice. What school? Four years at the Academy in Dresden and uh, at the university in Vienna, two years. Maybe she could tutor me on the side. You have a room for me. Well, yes, we do have a room. On, uh, there are just a few... Th oh, Helen, you take it from there, huh? Well, my dear, we'd like to know what your salary will be. That's it. Uh, well, you see, it is like this. Because I am not yet a citizen, I cannot work in the war plant. But you all work in the war plant, and if I help you, I help the war just the same. Is that not right? I think it is. And to make it more so, your husbands are all fighting against the Nazis. My husband also is in the United States Army fighting against the Nazis. So that makes us one. How then to talk about money? Now, if you will show me my room, please. Show her the room and see if she likes it. Right this way, Manya. Yeah, I honestly thought I felt tears coming in my eyes. She's... she's pretty, isn't she? Did she like it? She didn't get that far. She walked into the kitchen, took one look at the stove, said it needed cleaning, and went right to work. But what are we gonna do about her? Well, after what she said about us all being one, you can't hire a thing like that. Look, why don't we take our cash after the rent and groceries are paid and split it five ways? Well, even that wouldn't be as much as she could make somewhere else. I don't think Mamia cares a great deal about that. I think that's a darn good idea. Why don't we take a vote on it? Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Motion's carried unanimously. Mamia! Yeah? We've decided about your salary. Oh, that's good, good. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. We want to tell you about it. Yeah? Well... We're going to pool all of our salaries, and we'll pay the rent and take care of the expenses of the house. And what's left over, we'll split five ways. You see, we're running this joint like a democracy. Like a democracy? Oh, that's good. That's good. Once in Germany, we had a democracy. But we... You lost it? No. We did not lose it. We let it be murdered. Like a little child. Hi, gang. Hi. Look what I brought home to take care of that family up in the attic. Oh, oh you I did like him. Him. Oh, well, let's not start pampering him. Hector, you have a job to do. Named him Hector on the way in. I know where there's enough fresh meat to last you the rest of your life. Oh, give him back to me. <laughs> okay, but no coddling. Where have you been? Oh, I stopped by and had my hair done. Do you like it? It looks lovely. You have very small ears. You should always wear it so they show. Well, that's probably the smallest compliment I've ever been paid. I have two legs, two arms, two eyes, and a lot of other stuff. And you sidestep them all by talking about my ears. Well, I've got to go upstairs and change. You going out? Yeah, I have a date tonight. Due to show at 8.30. With a man? Well, as far as I know. Who? 
Do you know that moth-eaten Don Juan that's been pestering me for the last month? Tonight he's going to learn how it is to go out and play with the big girls. Coconut Grove. Oh, I don't think you ought to go. Neither do I. For the love of Mike, why not? Well, I just don't think we ought to start anything like that. Like what? Like... Like having a bunch of smelly old men hanging around the house all the time. How do you know he smells? And he's not old either. Forty-two. That's not even Indian summer. Go ahead and do what you like. You will anyhow. But I should think with Pete out there somewhere on a ship, you might at least pretend to play square. You leave Pete out of this. He's a no-good, double-crossing, woman-chasing dope. He hasn't written to me for three months, and as far as I'm concerned, he doesn't have to. And in the meantime, if some slap-happy old goat wants to lay a little champagne on the line, I'm just the girl to do it with. Well, all the same, you'll be sorry sometime. It just occurs to me that this is none of your business. Let's take a vote on it. All in favor of me taking care of my affairs and you taking care of yours, say aye. Aye. Do you win? The motion is carried unanimously. Excuse me while I change my clothes. You know, in a way, I guess I don't blame Barbara. I get kind of lonesome myself. For just any man? Mm -mm. Just for Chris. Yeah. Me too. Manya! Manya, what's the matter? I'm going to quit the butcher. Quit Mr. Johnson? Manya, why? He's the black market. Mr. Johnson? Oh, Manya, there must be some mistake. No mistake. I tell him this morning I only have sent for one pound of bacon. And so please send me only one pound. And just now I find he sends me two pounds of bacon. Two pounds when I have only sent for one pound. Maybe he made a mistake in the order. No, no, no mistake. He sends a note with it. And it says, for us, he does the favor of one extra pound. Well, Manya, I know he shouldn't do that, but perhaps he was just trying to be nice to it. Nice to us, yeah. But with bacon scarce, is it being nice to the other peoples? Is it being nice to my John in the United States Army fighting the Nazis? No, it is not nice. So I quit him. But, Manya, it's such a little thing. Yeah, it's a little thing. But when little things go, big things follow. I have seen. I have seen in Germany the little things and what happened afterwards. Well, Manya, instead of quitting Mr. Johnson, why don't you have a talk with him, explain how we feel, and tell him not to do it again. Well, okay. This time I will talk to Mr. Johnson, but next time I report him. There's not going to be any hoarding of bacon in this house. There's not going to be any hoarding of anything in this house. Taking the food right out of the mouth of the United States Army. And that's what I'm going to tell Mr. Johnson. She makes you feel kind of like a spy or something, doesn't she? Well, she's right, of course, but I do think Mr. Johnson deserves a warning. Look, what difference does a pound of bacon make one way or the other? Well, it may not make any difference to you, but it does to me. I think anyone who hoards is a heel. Oh, forget it. You know, I... I think there's something I'm going to have to tell. I bet this is going to be really wicked. Well, I'm not sure, but I... I think I'm a hoarder. You, a hoarder. Yes, that's probably what I am, but... But I started hoarding this particular thing long before anybody mentioned they were going to be scarce. Well, even when I was a little girl, maybe 15, I, I'd always buy two instead of one. But lately, it's getting to be like a vice. I, I buy three. Once I even bought four. Be careful what you say. If it's silk stockings, remember, we wear the same size. Oh, no, no, it's not stockings. What is it, then? I'll get them and show you. Anybody want a cup of coffee? No, thanks, Randy. Joe? I'll take it if nobody else wants it. Me, when I drink coffee after dinner, I cannot sleep. So, should it go to waste? Thank you, Mania. Yes. But you've got dozens. 127. They're even different shades. I don't get it. You must have some kind of a complex or something. Well, I don't know. I can't explain it. But why have you got different shades? Well, I thought that as I grew older, I'd...
probably take lighter shades than I take now, so I got a lot of different shades. Gee, what are you complaining about? You're crazy. With all those, you can hold out for 75 years. It's pretty bad, isn't it? With all that metal and all that grease, it's not good. What am I going to do with them? I'm sick of them. I hate them. They're on my conscience like a guilty secret. All the time, I go around feeling like Lady Macbeth. Why don't you take them back to the druggist and have him sell them? Well, I tried to, but they have health laws or something. He can't take them. Why don't you write to the government about it? I did. <clears throat> well, uh, who'd you write to? The FBI. Well, what'd they say? I've got the letter upstairs. They told me to refer the matter to my pastor. I think it was a joke. Looks like we're stuck with enough lip rouge for the duration. And let's leave it at that. We've had enough lectures around here for one night. This joint's getting so moral, we're all afraid to take a deep breath. That's a funny thing to say. You know what I mean. Bacon, men, lipsticks, gab, 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 moral, moral, moral. You'd think we were running a home for... a home. I, um, suppose you don't think hoarding very important, huh? Why don't you relax for a change? Do you think we're going to lose this war or win it for that matter on account of a box of lipsticks or a pound of bacon? You know better than that. Well, if it were just one pound of bacon, I don't suppose it would make any difference. But what if 20 or 30 million other women went out and did the same thing? I've got enough troubles of my own without worrying about 20 or 30 million dames I don't even know. And if you want the truth, I think this rationing and everything that goes with it's just a pain in the neck. Barbara, you sound like a... Fifth columnist. Look, you two jumped on me first. The minute I came in the door, you started psalm singing. Well, now I'm going to tell you something. I've been listening to this gavel about we've got to do this and we've got to do that for three weeks. And sisters, I'm plenty sick of it. Rationing, sure. I'll hold still for it because I've got to. But I'm not going to run around like a moon-faced Pollyanna saying I like it. I never said I, I liked it. finished. Maybe I'm not so dumb as you think I am. This whole thing would never have happened in the first place if we'd been minding our own business. We wouldn't have to get a government stamp out every time we wanted to buy a piece of butter if they weren't shipping it all to a lot of foreigners. Why, they're rationing gas right here in California where they got more of the stuff than they can haul away. Even the government doesn't know what it's going to do tomorrow. They're going to ration this. They're going to ration that. They are. They are. Blow hot, blow cold, he's up, he's down. What kind of business is that anyway? Why, we're being pushed around at home. Our guys are out fighting in countries they never even heard of. For a lot of foreigners who'll turn on us like a pack of wolves the minute it's over. Barbara! Well, it's the truth, and you know it. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Do you know where that kind of talk comes from? It comes straight from Berlin. Every time you say it, every time you even think it, you're double-crossing your own husband. Oh. How can we go on minding our own business when somebody blackjacks us in an alley and you've got Pearl Harbor on your hands? And who wants to get slick and fat when half the people in the world are starving to death for things that we can do without? Mistakes? Sure, we make mistakes. Plenty of them. You want a country where they won't stand for a mistake? Go to Germany. Go to Japan. And the first time you open your trap like you have tonight, you'll find a gun in your stomach. You're the kind of people Hitler counted on when he started this war. Talk, 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 and never think. And that's the biggest mistake any guy ever thought of making. Because there are not enough of you, and there are plenty of us, and by Judas Priest, if it takes... That's my date. Saved by the bell. Well, I think we need a little music. You feel better? I wish Hello, I'd Waldo. sock Come in. Hello, Beth. Uh, I'll run right on up and get my things. You remember Waldo Pearson? Helen Stacy? And Doris Dombrowski? And featherweight Joe Jones? How do you do? Well, the atmosphere's a little thick, Waldo. We've been having what's known as a small beef just among us girls. A small beef's better than none these days. <laughs> well, make yourself we at home. We pause for a late bulletin. The Navy Department has announced the loss of the United States aircraft carrier Yorktown in the Battle of Midway. Announcement of the disaster has been withheld pending notification of next of kin. Four Los Angeles men are reported missing when the big ship went down. They are Lieutenant Junior Grade Howard Christensen, 535 Teller Avenue, Machinist Mate Peter Thomas, whose wife is believed to reside in Los Angeles, but who has not yet been located. Barbara, dear. I'm all right. You better go. Sure. Any 
anything I can do, just let me know. Ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to be an actress. I guess I've been building my whole life to this moment. I'll... I never expected the timing to be so good. And on a staircase, too. Oh, why doesn't somebody cut my tongue out when I... Oh, what's the matter with me? Why can't I learn to keep my big trap shut? Well, Chris, I did it again. I promised I wouldn't, but I did. Where does this go? Oh, in the lower left-hand door. <coughs> well, that's done. Where are you going? Moving room. Where else? What are you going to do? Going to sit down. Read, read, read. Shine. I'll get at them in the morning. The Allied world was stunned today by the capitulation of King Leopold of the Belgians. His surrender jeopardizes the entire Allied position. The French have begun a retreat in the direction of Abbeville, while the British are falling back. It's called, Will the United States Enter World War II? Oh. Mind if I sit in your lap? No, I guess I can read just as well that way.
Ouch. It hurt? Well, sure it hurt. It hurt a lot. Oh, you man. Always whining. I'm not whining. You asked me a question and I answered it, that's all. There's no whining to it. Oh. Hey. Did you sterilize that needle? I might get an infection. Oh, an infection? I never heard such hollering. Stuck a nail clear through my foot when I was 12 and didn't make half as big a fuss. I'm not making a fuss. I'm just pointing out to you that when you take a needle that long and jab it halfway through a man's hand, that's no good. You'll scar me up and... Oh, uh, scar you And up. besides, it's unsanitary. I think you're a hypochondriac anyway. Well, how do you like that? Just because I don't want to get stuck like a pig in a slaughterhouse, she says I'm a hypochondriac. Hold still. This is not going to hurt at all. Oh! You see? Didn't hurt at all. No more than if you chopped my leg off, not a bit more. I wish you'd spend more time sewing buttons on my shirts and less time hacking at my hand. What was that about your shirts? The shirts are all right. It's the buttons. I'm wearing the only one that's got a complete set of them. Well, why didn't you say something about it? I did, day before yesterday. I said, Joe, my shirts are all getting so they don't have any buttons on them. You don't have to carry on so about it. All I did yesterday was just to scrub the back porch and clean out the basement and take those slips over to Mother's house and get you your breakfast and get you your lunch. Well, and will you lay you off? You sound like I was making a galley slave out of you. Well, that's exactly what you are trying to do. All day long, it's just work, 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 day in, day out, trying to keep the house neat and clean and trying to keep you fed. And what happens the minute you hit the front door, you start yelling something about the buttons on my shirt. I haven't just hit the front door. I've been home for two hours. I've eaten dinner, and I helped you with the dishes. I start to read an article, and you start to rip open my hand, and I just happen to say something just about happens. buttons. And... You've been building up to it all evening. So I didn't try to keep things going. Well, all right. Go ahead. Get it all off your chest. Think up some more things. You want me to? Yes. All right, I will. My suit isn't back from the cleaners, and this one looks like a rag. And that's because you didn't send the other suit to the cleaners when you were supposed to. And my socks are always in the top drawer instead of in the middle drawer, where I keep begging you to put them. And my nightshirt's never on the same hook at night as where I put it in the morning. And somebody's been using my razor. And you can't tell me it was the cat. Is that all? It's all I can think of at the moment. But you give me a little time, and I'll think of plenty more. Including, I suppose, the fact that you never clean out the bathtub when you're through bathing. There you go. I warned you about that before we were ever married. I told you I hated cleaning out the tub and I'd never do it. No, sir, you can't hang that on me because you were told in advance and you said you didn't care. That's because I didn't know you so well. Now I do. Now I know what you wanted me for in the first place. Me, I'm just a cheap substitute for a housekeeper. All you want is somebody to work and slave and scrub and cook and order the groceries and take care of the laundry and the pressing and clean the house and dust the furniture and lay out your clothes and scrub the bathtub and then sit with her hands folded in the evenings and watch you read. Buttons on your darn old shirts. 
All right, Joe, let's have it. Have what? Let's have what the trouble is. Well, there's no trouble. Come on, be a good guy. If you're sore, I've at least got a right to know why. Well, all right, I'll tell you. Because I never get to see you anymore. You've only been home to dinner twice this week. And then when you do come home, you just sit around and read. The nights I haven't been home, I've been working. You know that. Haven't you got spunk enough to tell him to get somebody else to put in all that overtime down there? What are you, a man or a mouse? I volunteered for that overtime, Joe. You volunteered? Yeah. Well, now I am getting mad. How about thinking a little less of the company and a little more about me? Because I am your wife. Well, I am thinking about you. That's why I'm taking on this extra work. Well, now, let's get this straight. You mean you're taking on more overtime down there because you're thinking of me? Yes. Okay, why? Well, you heard the news that came over the radio about Belgium. Sure, sure I heard it. So what? Nothing. Except that sooner or later we're going to get in this war. And that means that, that I may have to go. And if that happens, I don't want to leave you high and dry. I want to save up some money so that, well, so that you'll be okay till I get back. And that's why I'm grabbing all the overtime that comes along. What do you think I am, Chris Jones? An idiot? No. I think you're a cute kid. Oh, now, don't try to joke your way out of this. Do you think that I'd trade one evening with you for all the money you could possibly make down at that darned old plant? I'm sorry, Joe. Maybe someday you'll understand. But if things go the way I think they'll go, I'm making sure that my wife isn't left without enough money to see her through. Don't yell at me, Chris Jones. I wasn't yelling. Your wife. You talk as if you had a bill of sale on me or something. Or I was a horse you had to lay in a supply of hay for. Well, I'm just old-fashioned enough to think that... Don't give me that Horatio Alger woman on a pedestal baloney. Look, you want money? Okay, I'll go out and get a job. And we can just stack it up in the bank, higher and higher and higher, until we've got so much we'll never see each other. Now, there's no reason to fly off the handle. Either you give up this night work and spend your evenings with me, or I'll go out tomorrow morning and get myself a job. You'll do nothing of the sort, I Joe. I will so. I'll sling sodas, I'll wait table, I'll even wash dishes. And you can just make up your mind to it right now. You mean that? You bet I do. Okay. You win. You mean, no more night work? No. Oh, Chris. I didn't mean to be such an ornery old hag, but you make me so darn mad. I guess I'm pretty much of a dope. Oh, no, Chris. You're the smartest guy I ever saw, but you must try to remember that I'm a little bit smart, too. I don't get much chance to forget it. It's just that I don't want money. I only want you. Yeah. I guess that's the way I feel, too. And Chris, I'm sorry I hurt your finger just now. And I'm sorry I got so mad so all of a sudden. I won't do it again. Hmm? No, that's a promise, Chris. I'll count up to 600 or something. I simply will not fly up like that anymore. Okay. Only don't get too perfect. I kind of like you the way you are. Sorry, Toots. Afraid you belong outside. Any mail, Manya? <laughs> Manya, what's the matter? It's, it's my drum. Oh, Manya. Yeah. For well, I says. Anya, 
How is your husband? No, he's fine. He's fine. It's from him. He sent it to me. Oh, oh you really gave us a scare, Manya. Oh, so happy I was. I just... Come here, Barbara. Let him mind his husband's medal. Oh, it's beautiful. You must be pretty proud, Manya. Yeah, proud. Where well, we put it? Put it? Doris. Well, you don't think we're going to let Manya keep this all to herself, do you? Oh, oh, it's part of ours. Share and share alike, isn't that right? Uh-huh. Democracy. Well, then let's put it where we can all see it. How about the medal? Oh, that would be nice. Of course it would. What good's a medal if, if nobody knows you've got it? Come on. Oh, but no, oh, no. There. Our first medal. Sure looks pretty. Oh, Joe, come here and look at Manya's medal. Oh, that's lovely, Manya. That's really lovely. Where were you this afternoon? How come this absenteeism stuff? Yes, what about it? Look, kids, we're going to have to call a meeting right away. Joe, what's wrong? Everybody sit down, huh? Are you sure you're sober? I'm as sober as I'll ever be. Look, kids, we got trouble. That kind of trouble? Well, I'll explain. Remember, it was uh, my idea that we take this house in the first place. I suggested it, right? Yeah. Yes. And um, it was I who suggested we get somebody like Manya. Remember? Joe, what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> well, you see, uh, the way it's turning out now, it, it it looks like I'm gonna get more good out of this house than any of you. Because, well, that's why I want you to know that I didn't know until today. Know what? That I'm going to have a baby. That's what. Oh, Joe. Joe. Oh, darling. Oh, 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 oh. What is the young man's name to be? Why, Chris Jones, of course. Just Chris Jones? Oh, I'm sorry. Christopher Latham Jones, Jr. And father's living? He is. He's in the Army. I guess you'll have a surprise for him when he comes back, won't you? <laughs> you said it. By the way, we're so crowded here that we're asking all the mothers who are able to leave at the end of six days. Will you mind that? Oh, of course not. I'd like to leave right now. I know, but I won't let you go unless you're in good shape. When can I see my baby doctor? Listen. He can't make all that noise. He's contributing. It'll only be a minute now. Take care of yourself. I'll see you tonight. I did a neat job on this one, Chris, my boy. And we were going to be so smart. Remember? used to do it, see? That. And this is the way the doctors recommend them nowadays, see? Oh. A lot of people go out and get little jackets and little boots that the doctors simply will not let them wear until they're six months old and all that sort of thing. It's not very practical. First things first. And when you're getting ready for babies, that means diapers. I see. Louise wanted me to get a bathrobe. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, uh, Louise knows about this, too, does she? Of course. Everybody does. 
But uh, you never got around to telling me, on account of I'm not very important. Well, there's no use complaining about it. I thought you knew. Oh, sure, sure. From a fortune teller, I suppose. Well, there's no use getting upset about it. Well, I don't see why not. Because it's none of your business, that's why. If Harvey wanted you to know, I guess he would have told you. Well, what's Harvey got to do with it? Don't be such a numbskull. It's going to be Harvey's baby. Now, go on, get out of here while I put these things away. You mean Harvey and Jane are going to have a baby? Of course. Jane called and told me this morning. We're going to give her a shower, and I got diapers. Well, that's different. Oh, Chris, you didn't think Yeah, that. that's exactly what I thought. Oh, Chris, I think that's cute. You were scared. I wasn't scared, just surprised. You know, it would be a surprise to come home some night and learn right off the bat you're going to have a baby. And that's just the way you do it, too, just like you were then with the diapers. Would you have been disappointed? I don't know. I don't think this is the time to have babies. Well, everybody seems to be having them. Harvey and Jane and the Gateses and the Hiltons and well, practically everybody. Yeah, not getting at anything, are you, Joe? No. Why? Because if you are, I think we ought to do a little talking about it first. Okay. You mean, let's talk about having babies? In a way. You see, Joe, I wouldn't like to leave you alone with a baby. Leave me alone? Who said anything about that? I'm saying it now. Draft is going to come calling on me one of these days, and I just assume you're in good health, with nobody to take care of but yourself. But they're not going to take married men. It said so in the paper only yesterday. I think they will. And there was something in the paper only this afternoon. Here it is. Look. See? There isn't going to be any war. I wouldn't count on that too much. This isn't going to be any tea party, Joe. They're going to have to take married men before it's over. And I want to be ready. You mean you want to go off and get no, into the army? I don't mean that at all. Nobody really wants to. Just to, it may become necessary. Oh, Chris, I don't think that's fair. Well, there's nothing fair, honey, than taking the men who are able to go. And that's me. That's why when you started talking about babies, I got scared. Yeah, I guess you're right, Chris. Only, if we did have a baby, I wouldn't be so alone when you went. There'll be time afterwards. You see, Joe, I've kind of made some plans about that kid of ours. I want him to have the best of everything, the very best from the minute he's born. You do, too. Sure. I want him to look like you, too. You see, Joe, having a baby is a pretty important thing. It's, it's something that's got to be carefully planned for. They take you and me. We never went to college. Well, I'm not complaining, and neither are you. But our kid, that's different. I want to have everything arranged for him. If he wants to be a doctor, a lawyer, a musician, Whatever it is he likes, I want to be able to back him up. That's important, Joe. He'll be smart. Hope he's got your brains. And again, I'd, I'd kind of like to be around when he's born. You know, that's something people ought to go through together. I'd like to see him when he, he begins to smile and talk. And whatever it is they do first, especially the early things. I love you so much that I seem to be going around all the time in some kind of a pink fog. That's true. I'm the luckiest guy on earth. You're the prettiest girl that ever lived. Mm. That kid of ours. That post-war genius we're going to have. Oh, Chris, I'll bet he's going to be a terror. Oh, 
just like your dad. Holler before you're hurt. Doctor's having him sleep in Manya's room until I can get up. Did you hear about Barbara? What about Barbara? Why not let Barbara tell her? Oh, okay. Can I go down and see the baby? If you can get Manya, let you in. I'll be right back. Joe, you're the most beautiful mother I've seen in years. Bet you tell that to all the mothers. <laughs> well, I, I guess I'll go and see the baby. Barbara will keep you company. I'm just going to see the young man. Oh, it's good to have you back, gal. It's good to be back, too. We've both had good luck since you left for the hospital. You've got a boy, and... and I've got a husband. Barbara. Oh, I'm so glad. When did you hear? This afternoon. He's in a hospital in Honolulu. He's going to be okay. I'll never be able to tell you how sorry I am for... Well, blowing off at you that time, just before you heard about his ship being sunk. Don't be sorry, Joe. I deserved it. I'm just a big, no good dame. Well, my heart's in the right place. That is, most of the time. But this sky piece of mine, it's solid ebony. Now, you take Pete. He wasn't a bit more to blame for our trouble than I was. He's just an easy-going guy that'd sooner have a monkey wrench in his hand than a checkbook. And we used to drink a lot. You know, go around to cabarets and all. And he'd make a lot of passes, and I'd make a lot of passes. And neither of us ever met him, but... Well, it'd always be a big beef. Yeah, I know. Most of the fights I've ever had with Chris were over nothing at all. You never realize how silly it all is until you can't get together anymore. Even to fight. Yeah. You know, I've been pushed around a lot. I've seen plenty. I always swore that I'd Never knuckle down to any man, no matter how good he was. But if I ever get that guy in my arms again, I'll knuckle down to him, Joe. I'm gonna love that man like nobody's ever been loved before, because... because... well, just because. What are you going to do if you should ever find him making passes again? I'll wring his neck. He's just a little twerp, you know. Oh, Joe, he's the most beautiful boy I've ever seen. He's absolutely beautiful, isn't he? Oh, he's perfectly beautiful. I guess he's beautiful. Well, he is. He smiled at me, too. Oh, they don't smile at six days. The doctor said so. Well, then he's just unusual, that's all, because he curled his lips up and he smiled. Oh, he's so beautiful. You should have thumped him on the back. That was just a gas pain. Well, nobody can tell me. I know, it's supposed to be fashionable to talk down your own child and call him an idiot. But that baby smiled at me. Will he pass, Helen? Mm-hmm. He's a fine boy. You're going to be proud of him. As a matter of fact, we're all going to be proud of him. Well, I guess i better go down and take a look at the little monster. I'll go with you. Letter for you. I forgot all about it. Oh. You mind? From my husband. Everybody gets me around here but me. Would you mind reading just a little bit to me? Why, of course, darling. So glad to hear that you have found a really nice place to live. And that your friends are so charming. Things have been very busy here, the same routine, but it looks as though we'll have a fine bunch of fighting men when we finish. I just received word through my commanding officer, Captain Rutledge, that... that our tent has become a major. 
My little Ted. He doesn't know it yet, and probably won't until the papers reach his post a week or two hence. Don't let him know that I was the first to tell you, but somehow I felt that it was our triumph as much as his, and that I had the right to break. I can't see. the right to break the news in secret. I find myself sitting in this jungle today thinking of all the things that have happened to us since I last was in uniform, and all of them center around Ted. I thought of the time he had scarlet fever, and the time he broke his arm, and the day he won that medal in the 60-yard dash, and the first time he fell in love. I remember that particularly, and how hard you tried to keep from being jealous of the girl, even though she was only 14. I thought of the day he left college, and how heartbroken both of us were. I remember his first blind anger with the world when it reached out and slapped him. But I remember most of all, that for 23 years, with all our blunders, we still have his respect. That's pretty good. I can scarcely wait until I see him with gold oak leaves on his shoulder. I'll come to attention and salute him. I'll salute him very proudly. But in my heart, I'll be saying, little son, what I really want is to put my arms around you and hold your head close to me and kiss your cheek. Strange to think he'd resent it, our little son who used to love it so. Think I'd... Sherry, coming right up. Why don't you take that coat off and make yourself at home? Well, you see, I'd plan When a to... man gets home, he likes to take his coat off. And this is your home as long as you want to you stay. You must be hungry. Do you want me to make you some sandwiches? Uh, no, well, thanks. Why don't you take your shoes off and just stretch out and relax? Doris, why don't you go upstairs and get Chris's bedroom slippers? They're in my closet. I'll just take a second, you. <laughs> and, uh, wait a minute. I want you to take that stuff off your mouth. Anya's gone out of her mind. She's throwing more pups around than I've seen since I left the Harvey house. Take a glass and have a slug. Gee, I wish you were something stronger. Oh, I do wish you'd have something to eat. Look, why don't you come over here and sit in this chair where it's really nice and comfortable and you can prop your feet up and relax, huh? 
Maybe you'd like a nice warm bath. Joe, go and fix him a nice hot bath. Uh, there, no doesn't that feel better? Hey, we ought to have a fire in the fireplace. Some people say it takes a heap of living to make a house a home, but I say it takes a bright fire and a good-looking man. I'll be right back. Here, here's something for you to read. Oh, he doesn't want to read. I do think you ought to have a nice warm bath. But he says he just had a bath. Well, he must want something, poor boy. All right, what do you want, huh? Well, I thought I'd like to have... Cigarette. Oh, no, keep them all. Dombrowski. Aren't they cute? We're going to help you get dinner, Manny. Help? Oh, no, no help. Now, this is a special occasion, Manny. We're going out and buy some extras. I got beef soup, stuffed cabbage, sour cream, and apple kuchen, so. Now, let us have a little fun, too, Manya. Look, why don't each of us cook the thing we make best? Well, that's a wonderful idea. I'll do abalone steaks. George used to love them. Mixed stuffed cabbage. Oh, Pete's crazy about baked oh. oysters. He simply can't get enough Mixed of them. Mixed stuffed cabbage. That's a little too much. Oh, well, no, no. We'll have the oysters first, and then the stuffed cabbage can be kind of a, an hors d'oeuvre, and then the abalone steak. Okay, then I'll make the dessert. Pumpkin pie with whipped cream. You know, Chris ate two whole pies one day. Mixed stuffed got cabbage. cabbage. We've got mushrooms for the sauce. We need plenty of butter. Well, have we got the ration, too? Yeah, they're well, mine's here. upstairs because I had nothing there. for the baby, but I'll see you all out in front. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Oh, do you need anything, Manu? Nine. Baked oysters and pumpkin pie. Abalone is taken. Whipped cream. With stuffed cabbage. Cowsley. Cowsley. I haven't had a chance to say it yet, Doris, but you're so pretty I'm almost afraid to touch you. Don't be. Oh, boy, look at that. Dear, do you think they're going to be all right? They're beautiful. Maybe even with stuffed cabbage. Well, here goes. Good luck. There. I haven't made them for so long. I hope they'll be all right. Well, here, give me your plate. Well, what's the matter? Are they oysters? Yes. I can't eat them. They make me sick. Oh, dear, well, what do we do? I don't know. I just know that I can't eat oysters. Well, here, give me a plate. We'll think of something. The cat. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. Cats love fish, don't they? I think so. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty. Have an oyster. Oh, they're too hot for him. Wait a minute, kitty. Oh, we'll never have enough time to cool them off. Here, give them to me. It's a mean thing to do, but we can't hurt her feelings. I'll eat mine. I don't see how you can do it. They make me double up and get the bends. Well, I knew six wouldn't be enough. There. I think you'd like my husband. He's an oyster eater, too. Such an appetite I never saw. Three stuffed cabbages and two helpings of oysters. And he's on his second abalone steak right now. Well, we ought to be ready for their dessert for soon. Huh? You know, those poor boys get such plain food in the army. It's a pleasure to see them eat when something special comes along. Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Hey, somebody rang the doorbell. Yes, I'll get it. Sit down, Mike. Your poor kid, don't you like fish? Oh, Joe, it's just been terrible. Fish makes him sicky. He doubles up and gets the bends. Oh, it's just been awful. Now, don't think a thing about it. If we hadn't been such darn fools, we would have asked him what he liked in the first place. You see, Mike, you're in a kind of a funny spot tonight. We've all got the idea that you're our husband. And so we've been out cooking the things that our husbands like. Oh, that's okay. Only I'm going to have to clean out that fireplace before morning. Look, I've got pumpkin pie with whipped cream for dessert. Do you like it? Now, tell the truth. I love it. Good. Coming! Look, kids, I'll have all this stuff cleared off, and I'll serve the dessert right away. 
Then I'll make some sandwiches and I'll stash them in the icebox. Okay? Oh, Joe, I'm so glad you understand. And what's more, I'll get this downstairs cleared out in the next 30 minutes if I have to use a baseball bat. Look, honey, is this 975 West Adams Street? No, this is 957. I mean 957. Oh, thank goodness. I got a telegram here for 957 West Adams Street. Sign here, please. Sure is hard to try to find anything in this dim out, especially house numbers. Here's your telegram. Mm -hmm. Wake up, Chris. I'm sorry to have to wake you up like this, but I've got to talk to somebody. I can't talk to them downstairs because they're having a wedding down there. And you're the only one I can tell it to. I guess this is just a private thing between you and me anyway. I suppose years from now, I'll still be telling you how I stood there beside the train. Your train is like this one. You'll be waiting, and I'll jump off, pick you up, clear off the ground, kiss you a couple of hundred times, and take you back to Shale City. Father, Chris, this is your son. You two aren't ever going to meet. Only through me will you ever know anything about each other. So now I'm making my introductions. This is the kid you never wanted till you met me, Chris. And this is your dad, young fella. I think I've been loving you since the time you hit me on the forehead with a clinker. I knew him when he wasn't much bigger than you. Or maybe a little bigger. You've got his eyes and that mop of hair. I mean, that one hair on your head that never stays in place. It's your dad coming out all right. Seems funny to call him your dad. He was such a baby himself. Just by having been brought up with him, I know everything that's going to happen to you. When you're seven, some girl's going to hit you over the head with a clinker. And when you're 10, you're going to cut her hair. 
And when you're 15, you're going to take her to her first dance. And break her heart. You see, little guy, I know the ropes. I've kind of made some plans about that kid of ours. I want him to have the best of everything. The very best from the minute he's born. Remember him, son. Remember your father as long as you live. He was a fine man, Chris Boy. He never made speeches. But he went out and died so that you could have a better break when you grew up than he ever had. Not the same break, but a better one. Because he did a lot of thinking about you in his own way. Never forget it, little guy. Never forget it. A big backyard with a vegetable patch. A place for him to play. He didn't leave you any money. He didn't have time, Chris boy. No million dollars or country clubs or long, shiny cars for you, little guy. He only left you the best world a boy could ever grow up in. He bought it for you with his life. That's your heritage. A personal gift to you from your dad. And one more thing. As long as you live, don't let anybody ever say he died for nothing. Because if you let them say it, you let them call your dad a fool. You let them say he died without knowing what it was all about. We agree to live with you. With enough food in our own home. That's what the war is about, I guess. He died for a good thing, little guy. And if you ever betray it, if you ever let it slip away from you, have you ever let anybody talk you out of it, or swindle you out of it, or fight you out of it? You might as well be dead, too. So hang on to it, sweet. Clutch on to it with those tiny little fingers. Grab on to it, Chris boy. Grab it right out of your dad's hands and hold it high. Hold it proud. No matter how tough things are, no matter how bad they seem, think of him and you'll come through. Come on, Joe, head up. Take it on the chin like a good guy, like a soldier's wife should. Mm -hmm. 